Hello, my name is Scott. I'm going to be your YouTube companion here for the next maybe hour or so. Uh, what I'm going to be doing on this channel is delving into metal albums. I'm going to be reacting to metal albums. They're going to be long videos. What I'm going to do to try to help you guys out with that is I'm going to put timestamps to uh, my favorite songs in the uh, description and in the comments. So that you guys, if you want to, you can fast forward to some of the some of the songs that I really enjoyed, uh, and probably some of the bigger songs, more well known songs as well on the albums. But my aim here is to do uh, reactions to uh, albums from metal bands that are not necessarily the most popular bands. I want to hit up a lot of obscure, mid level, and lesser known artists and give them some promotion and some shine on this channel. So I have to say that <clears throat> I don't make any money off this channel. Um, these videos are heavily edited so as to avoid uh, copyright issues. And I do give my commentary throughout the album reaction. So there's going to be some stopping and starting and some pausing. And I want to apologize for that up front. If you want to listen to the album in its entirety without me uh, giving my feedback or my commentary, the link, the original link to the album in its entirety is going to be in the description. So just go ahead and click that link and uh, you'll be able to enjoy it without uh, me talking over it. So um, thank you for stopping by. If you have any suggestions for future album reactions, please put them in the comment section. Please keep the comment section civil, okay? I don't want any personal attacks, no trolling, no shit posting, just no irrelevant or trivial information, please. Put what you want to hear me do in the comment section, and uh, I'll see what I can do. These take a long time to do. Yeah, I don't know how many I'm going to be able to get up a week. I'm trying this out, and I'm going to see what I can do, what I have time for, and see what sticks. So if you enjoy this video, again, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. That's it for the introduction. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Hey guys, album reaction number six here. This is going to be really cool. I'm super excited about this one. Uh, the album is uh, Nightfall by Candlemass. Candlemass is, as most of you probably know, a legendary doom metal band from Sweden. And this album came out in 1987. All of the stuff I've read about it from fans and critics, they all praise this thing and say it's a classic. Uh, one critic even said, he went so far as to say that this album should be in every metalhead's collection and that if you're a true metalhead, you need to own this album. Um, I have to be upfront. I have seen the video for Bewitched, so I am familiar with that song and that's one of the most hilarious music videos of all time if you guys ever get a chance to see it. Yeah, I've seen that, so the ninth track, Bewitched, on this album I will have already heard before. But I don't think I'm familiar with anything else on this album. Because none of these song titles sound familiar, and I've never listened to this album before. Yeah, I'm excited. I wanted to get... I've done some uh, Death Doom, some uh, mellow Death Doom type of stuff. When I say mellow, I mean melodic, but... Uh, you know, with the Woods of Yipres and Death White was inching a little bit over towards that territory as well. But I wanted to kind of do a traditional classic Doom album because I think that next to the other extreme uh, genres of metal, like death metal, black metal, grindcore, um, Doom metal doesn't really get uh, talked about as much. It's I don't think a lot of people have the patience to kind of uh, listen to it because it's it, maybe it's too slow for them and that's unfortunate because there are a lot of great artists in this genre and I wanted to kind of I know this isn't necessarily a uh, under the radar band Candlemass is a very well known band and um, when I started this channel I said I wanted to do more underrated albums underappreciated albums but I thought this would be a cool way to put a spotlight on this genre of metal and this time period 
and just, you know, pay my respects, sort of, to where a lot of this music came from in this particular subgenre. So, again, this is Nightfall by Candlemass. Um, the version that's on Google Music is an hour and 44 minutes, uh, but most of that is bonus content that came out with the reissue of the album. These include uh, demos for um, Bewitched, Battle Cry, a couple live cuts of uh, songs that, that are on this album, uh, studio outtakes, and a 24-minute interview at the end of, of the album. So I'm not going to react to any of that stuff. I'm just going to react to the original 10 tracks. And I timed, I clocked those, and those come out at about 48 minutes. So this is going to be more manageable than uh, the other albums I've been doing, for sure. So I'm excited about it for that reason as well. Again, if you guys have uh, recommendations or stuff you want to see on the channel, the channel is small enough at this point that if you recommend something, it's a good likelihood that I'm going to get to it. it I may not get to it right away uh, because I already have a, a, a list of albums that I want to do, but I'll definitely see if I can work it in there. And if I listen to it and I like it uh, while I'm filming, then I'll, I'll probably end up putting it on the channel. So feel free to put you guys' recommendations in the bottom. Uh, please... If it's going to be a recommendation, make sure it's something that is quality. Make sure it's 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 not necessarily an album that you really like because there's one or two songs on it that you just love and you love hearing those songs. Make sure it's a it's a solid album and that it can can hold interest for an entire 45 minutes or 50 minutes. Um, I'm not expecting it to like everything you guys suggest, but I want to try to make this channel about supporting and promoting quality albums. That's it. We're going to get into it now. Um, this first track off of Nightfall is called Gothic Stone. It's only 47 seconds, so I'm assuming this is some sort of uh, prelude. And uh, yeah, we're going to just see. We're going to see what's up with this thing. <laughs> funny, I already feel like I'm ascending to heaven with this prelude right here, or this first track. And the album cover is pretty cool. It's uh, It looks like a... Uh, I don't know what that is. If that's a... That is an angel. There's a guy in a boat, and there's an angel visiting him. And then there's another angel sort of near the, the top left. The clouds have parted, and this light is shining down, I'm assuming from heaven. You know, you can't judge a book by its cover, man. People think that uh, doom metal is all gloomy and slow and dirgy, but uh, from what I've heard so far and from the album cover, it seems like there's a certain element of these guys' music that is supposed to be, you know, angelic and very uh, heavenly sounding. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool to see that in there. But uh, that was Gothic Stone. We're going to move on to... Oh, one more thing. Have you guys ever heard the album uh, Midian by Cradle of Filth? There's the first track in that album kind of uh, reminds me of what's happening here because that album's got a opener that's like, it's very uh, uplifting and epic and awe-inspiring and it's getting you ready for the album. And it's, it's also sort of just an instrumental prelude. I wonder if Cradle may have borrowed that idea from Candlemass and from this album, but who knows? Maybe there are a lot of bands doing things like that, and I just don't know about it. But here, we're going we're gonna to go with the second song here. It's called The Well of Souls. This is 7 minutes and 26 seconds. <laughs> Yeah. 
this band definitely carved out their own unique sound, man. When you turn this on, it's like when you hear something, a song, even if you don't know the band that well or you've only heard a few songs, you turn one of their songs on, is you know it's them. You know it's Candlemass right away. Like they have a very unique kind of sound. This is definitely Black Sabbath all the way, man. Like this is this sounds like Black Sabbath's early uh, records. Uh, kind of updated and evolved a little bit. I love the guy's voice. You know, it's the uh, at some some points, some spots, the way he inflects on certain phrases and words uh, when he's singing. <clears throat> it reminds me a little bit of the guy from Spiral Architect, and I don't know if you guys remember that band, but they're a Norwegian metal band. It's a little bit avant-garde, but that's besides the point. But he, it's the way he kind of inflects on some of those phrases, it, it reminds me of that guy. And also, I want to say that his vibrato is off the charts, man. The vibrato that he uses in, uh, when he sings sets him apart from a lot of other metal vocalists, in my opinion. Also, he's capable of hitting those really high kind of falsetto uh, notes, those those like Rob Halford type uh, of notes. I think he's just excellent. And the the riffs, while they're not they're not really uh, grabbing me as much so far, like the guitar riffs, they're just very. It's easy to get into them. It's easy to like them. It's like. I don't know what it is about them, but they're just very inviting, and you can kind of just vibe out to them and and headbang or nod your head, and you don't have to think too much about about what's going on. I I really like this so far. It's not catchy in the traditional sense of the word, but it's I think this is still badass. Like this is really cool. So I'm gonna play the rest of the song. <laughs> second half of that song made me change my mind about the riffs, man. Those riffs are really good, I gotta admit. I love, they're simple, um, but they're, they're also, it's like classic Doom, man. And I'm not saying that because I know, I read the back, background about this album. It's just when I hear that, I'm like, it's not real heavy and thick. It's a little bit, a little bit minimalist. In its uh, presentation, especially with the amount of distortion they're using, it's not a ton of distortion. The riffs just, they sound evil. I don't know why, but they they do. Not evil in a sense of like, 
they're the band's trying to hurt you or but evil as in the in the sense of you're being told a story some epic story about a struggle between angels and demons and the choir vocals at the end were a nice touch i have a feeling like this band uh could be sort of again sort of epic and grandiose at times and i think that's kind of cool especially to find uh, that in a doom metal band. I like it when bands attempt stuff like that. I just want it to be pulled off, you know. I don't want it to sound cheesy or corny or over the top. But And to be honest, this music is a little bit over the top. I think it has more to do with his vocals. Um, his vocals are, I could imagine them being very polarizing. You know, that you either love him or you hate him. I happen to think he's a great vocalist. But his, for me, his vocals are really the centerpiece of the music they really make the music for me and make make the band so um but that's all i have to say about that song really I'm, well a soul's great song i'm going to move on to the third track now this is called codex gigas <laughs> instrumental track right there um i really like that too actually it sounded almost like though that the drums were slightly off like, i don't know what it was but it sounded like they were off tempo a little bit maybe they were uh behind the beat uh or something but but it sounded really it was a little bit awkward kind of listening to it you're like man those drums are, are aren't really uh keeping up with the the rhythm of the guitars and there was this other uh, kind of metronome-esque sound that was coming in that you had the two guitars playing and then there was another sound that sounded like a guitar but it was somebody was just had it palm muted and they were just um, over and over and over again they were going if you like listen to that track and you really pay attention you'll hear that and to me that was sort of a way of keeping time in the song and so I'm listening to that in with one ear and then in the other ear I'm hearing the drums and the drums are a little bit not all over the place because they're not playing anything crazy or complicated but they're kind of like doing their own thing <laughs> they see they sound like they're barely keeping time and then the guitar players are are playing along with the drums but it doesn't feel like they're um, adhering to the drums that closely feels like there's some space there uh, where the guitar players are a little bit more free to do whatever they want. This is a very fascinating track because I, I don't know, I haven't heard too many tracks like that, especially uh, from this genre. So I think I'm interested in it for that reason. I don't know if I'm going to play this on my own time, but definitely a cool, interesting little instrumental that they threw in. Uh, first they hit you with Well of Souls, and that was a seven and a half minute uh, track, and that was kind of, I guess for them, that's like trying to eat the elephant, right? And then right after that, they kind of give you a, a reprieve, and they, and they put in this two minute instrumental to kind of change the pace up a little bit. Um, this next song, the tr fourth track, is At the Gallows End. It's five minutes and 46 seconds. I'm excited for this one. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, 
so much to say about this song um first of all man the the sound of the drums i love it the sound of the drums man they just sound very um they sound real they've got a lot of body to them and there's almost a hollowness to the sound it's really strange but i just you can actually when you hear the drums on this album you can really it sounds like an actual instrument <laughs> Um, I know it's funny to say that, but just listening to it is kind of wow. I really, I really like that. Uh, the just the way it came in with this song started with the, uh, the acoustic guitar and the electric guitar playing together. This really beautiful melancholic kind of melody, and then his voice, you know, continued to climb and reach higher and higher, higher registers and get more and more epic. And then the music reached kind of a climax early in the song and then dropped into this crazy groove, man. That was That is one of the best uh, riffs I've heard from a doom metal band, man. To me, that is that particular riff, maybe that, not this whole song, and people will argue, talking down on Black Sabbath, like people in the metal world, like they'll crucify you for that. So I'm not going to do that. I, I like... Um, some of Black Sabbath stuff, but to me that that riff stands up with anything Tony Iommi ever came up with. I don't know who the guitarist in Candlemass is, but but that was just an excellent excellent riff, man. That, this is probably going to be one of my favorite songs on the whole album right here. Yeah, this stuff is good for headbanging. It's it's not too slow. It's very you know it's it's got kind of a faster tempo. And again, his voice is just out of control, man. He's got so he's got such a unique, interesting, powerful voice. And uh, yeah, this this entire song. And, and there's something too I wanted to say about the way his voice complements the music because the instrumentation is dark. The his voice with all of the vibrato in it, it makes it sound almost like sexy in a way. So Candlemass's music comes across as this weird fusion of like dark and sexy. I don't know how to describe it, but it's a little disoriented and disorienting at first. But once you kind of get into it, then you're like, man, this is actually really cool. Very, very impressed with what I've heard on this song so far, man. This is a fantastic song. <laughs>
That was so epic, man. His choices as far as his vocal lines and vocal melodies, I don't know what about it, but it just seems like, it sounds like this is some shit from the hallowed halls of metal. That's what it sounds like. It's just got that majestic, divine, epic feel to it, man. I really don't know how to put it into words. I can't believe that song, man. I can't believe how good that song was. That was crazy. Have you ever really have you ever been left speechless by something? I feel like I've been let rendered speechless by that. I'd rather listen to that and don't get me wrong, like, you know, Heaven and Hell, Sabbath Bloody Sabbath, you know, War Pigs, Iron Man. All those are very, very good songs, and there's other songs I'm not mentioning. To me, this, at, at the gallows end, though, this song, this song? If you want to talk about doom and and just this subgenre, man, this song stands toe-to-toe -to -toe with any of those songs, in my opinion. That was unreal. Now, we're going to play this fifth song, uh, Samarithan, I think is what it's called. So we'll see what's going on with this. <laughs> that up because it sounded like he was going to go into a really cool uh, vocal line just then but yeah his vocals again are are stealing the show for me but the riff also they somehow this guitarist for this band man has a knack for writing riffs that are real slow and and real simple but still sound evil like i don't know how they do that man that's like wizardry to me because everybody in, ex in extreme metal is trying to play fast there, most of them are trying to sound dark and evil, but, but, uh, and of course, I've listened to other Doom bands that sound, you know, slow and have slower riffs that are either melancholic, mostly melancholic stuff, depressive stuff, um, but these guys are trying to sound like dark, dark in the classic sense of like you're gonna swear your soul to Satan or something. And I don't think that's where these guys are coming from. I don't think they're uh, Satanists or something. And I don't think they're of that kind of ilk that kind of evolved in black metal particularly. But the, the riffs definitely sound dark. They sound uh, ancient somehow. They sound mystical. It's, it's just an incredible vibe that these guys... I feel like I'm listening to an ancient myth here. Some ancient story being told. Some ancient archetypal story about good and evil. And of course his voice is, again, it's it's uh, it's incredible, man. I could literally listen to this guy sing all day and never get tired of it. If I had one criticism about this song, I will say that there was a transition in here um, that I thought was a little rough. And they kind of, I was grooving uh, to what they were doing. I was really into the music. I was head bobbing and doing this whole thing. And then they kind of abruptly moved on to a totally different section that didn't have a lot of rhythm to it. And I was kind of... Yeah, this is the original part. Yeah. 
yeah, I liked that original drum pattern so much, and the riffs that they that the riff that they were playing so much, and I was kind of just vibing out to that, and then they they switched it up on me, and I think I would have liked them to have stayed in that you know that first groove that they had established, and I know that bands make transitions from between different sections in the song all the time, so I'm not mad that they did that. I'm just saying that kind of threw me. I was like right in the middle of it and I was really vibing out to the music and then it was like, oh shit. And then the next part didn't really carry the same uh, momentum for me as a listener. So I think uh, this is a song that I could grow to really enjoy. I already like it, but I think if I listen to this thing a few more times, I'll be able to grow and appreciate it even more. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish it out. Awesome, awesome song. Um, I think I got more used to that transition uh, the second time they used it in the back half of the song. So, yeah, I could live with that. Uh, it's just a little jarring the first time I heard it. Also, I don't know why they have all these technical melodic solos in here, man. I, I know that solos are a part of heavy metal, but it just seems like Doom is supposed to be a rejection of other extreme genres tendency to want to speed up and get more virtuosic this is definitely a little bit slower the riffs are simpler and uh but they have these like kirk hammett-esque solos in here it just seems like it would have been really cool if Candlemass would have been like yeah fuck playing fast and fuck solos you know, if they would have just really uh, thrown the whole thing out and started something completely new. Every time I hear one of those, I'm like, really? I'm like, really? You guys want to do that? Candlemas fans and fans of Doom will probably tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. It just And you heard that a little bit in the woods of, of Ypres, too. Just these solos that were in there. And I know I praised the solos in the Woods of Ypres uh, album that I did. But here, it just seems a little bit like unnecessary. You know, Candlemas is establishing this incredible atmosphere, this incredible vibe. They have these really great, slower, doomy, kind of dark riffs with his angelic voice over the top. That's enough already. You don't need some guy, you know, shredding on the guitar for a solo, too. Like, that seems like a little bit too much for me. Anyway... I'm going to, overall, I thought that was a fantastic song. So far, I thought The Well of Souls was good. Um, Codex Gigas, I'm still kind of not sure on how I feel about that. But these last two songs, At the Gallows End and, and Samarithan, uh, I thought both of those were badass. So I'm going to go ahead and play this next song. This is called Marche Funebre, which I'm guessing means funeral march. I could be wrong, but...
super badass song choice. The fact that that's even on this album is really cool. That reminds me of so many different things, man. Is this, for those of you in the comment section that know more about Candlemas than I do, was this song, track six, Marche Funebre, which I'm assuming means funeral march, is that a rendition by Candlemas of another piece of music? Okay, is that a piece from classical music? Like, what is that? Or did they just write this themselves? Because I tell you what, man, I've heard that in other places. Uh, I'm thinking primarily of the Japanese uh, musician and, and composer uh, Nobuo Uematsu, who was responsible for um, almost all the music for the Final Fantasy game franchise. And, and for all of those games, man, I've heard him use this so many times in those games. Stuff that sounds just like this, if not a direct copy of this. Yeah, I'm wondering, man, if, if this is a famous piece of music that Candlemas did a rendition of and and did their, did their own, uh, you know, version of. Or if this is something that they actually wrote themselves, if this is an original piece of music. Uh, please let me know that in the comments, guys, because I'm fascinated about that. I just, they, they seem like they're really willing to kind of throw in these different uh, smaller, shorter instrumentals into the music. And I think they do that to keep it varied and keep it interesting. Um, they may think that their music is a little bit of a chore to get through, but for me, man, this is peaches compared to some of the other stuff that I've listened to. So, but it's cool that they're conscious of that and that they're constantly breaking the album up with these small instrumentals. So, and they're, it's not like they're bullshit instrumentals either. They're actually very engaging. So I'm happy for that. But uh, we're going to move on to the seventh track. It's called Dark Are the Veils of Death.
Yeah, when he solos like that, man, it doesn't completely take away from the song, but again, it's just not necessary. I don't, it just breaks up the flow of the song. Like, I usually love solos, but with this band, it just, I feel like it's not needed. And it just feels very out of place, and and I'm grooving, I'm headbanging, and I'm just loving it, and his voice sounds excellent. And then, uh... Then the music stops and this weird solo comes in. I just, I gotta get over that, but I just can't, man. I just don't like it. This song, though, before that happened, before that solo, man, this, to me, the only, this and maybe At The Gallows End are in competition for the best songs on the album for me. Um, the riffs in this song, how can you argue with a man? And that tempo change, uh, whenever they started out a little mid-tempo, um, and they had the main riff of the song, and it was kind of it sounded again. It sounded dark. It sounded evil. Uh, but then the the tempo and the riff changed at the same time. It shifted, and everything sped up all of a sudden. And then he started singing. Uh, that was super cool, man. And and that happened a couple of times. And each time I was like, God, like how like like where did where did that come from, man? It was so unexpected and I loved that this this might be one of my favorites on the whole album we'll see how it finishes out luckily we got that solo out of the way but we're gonna see how it finishes out I really like this song I'm gonna get uh, let it play out Yeah, that was the best song maybe on the whole album. I don't know. It's it's, it's between that and At the Gallows End. Um, you can't argue with the riffs in that song. I'm sorry, man. That was so, the, the riffs in that song are excellent all the way through. With the exception of the solo in the middle, um, I was captivated through the entire thing. Um, I was amazed that they were able to write a seven-minute song that, the, that was that good because a lot of bands, especially doom metal bands, uh, when they right the, at least the ones i've heard and i don't want to go into specifics because i don't want to bash uh, any more bands on this channel but the ones i've heard when they, when they try to write long compositions uh, sometimes the music can get tedious man sometimes it just feels like they're repeating the same sections too much and the music's not evolving fast enough 
and it, it's just it's just taking its sweet time and you're sitting there trying to be patient and you're waiting and, and as a listener you shouldn't be waiting and uh, if your music is making your listeners wait for the music to get good I mean that's not a good sign and even my even doom uh, bands that I like have been guilty of that with this song with these guys the song was captivating the entire way through it didn't stay one tempo the entire time. The tempo changed several different times. Again, the guitar riffs were amazing. Um, his voice was excellent as usual. And yeah, I don't know what else to say about that song. I was I was grooving the whole song, man. I was. That's literally something that you could dance to almost. Um, it was. I mean, it was that. I mean, that's something that you really feel. Like I said on that uh, Woods of Ypres album re uh, reaction with that song Lightning and Snow. This, for a metalhead, a song like this, Dark Are the Veils of Death, should be a song that they feel in their bodies, a song that makes them move without them having to think too hard about why it's good. Um, it's just, to me, a song like this is just self-evidently good. You know, your body will let you know, guys. That was that song. I was incredibly impressed with that. I'm going to move on. This next song is called... Mourner's Lament. It's the eighth track and it's six minutes and eight seconds. <laughs> should be in the business of giving commentary but what do you say after that man like this dude the, I mean this to me this is a just a showcase for his vocal ability um, there's not the music's not that complicated it's not changing a whole lot um, the riffs don't really sticking out the drum patterns not really doing anything special um, this is just him wailing away and it's captivating. I don't. I can't think of very many vocalists in the history of heavy metal that are as iconic as this guy is. And I know he's not on the level of a Dio or an Ozzy or a Rob Halford or a King Diamond or any of those guys. But man, this this dude, he's he can sing his ass off, and he's unique. Moreover, I think that if this guy. Uh, tried to do, and maybe it's out there, maybe it already exists and I just don't know about it, but if this guy tried to cover an Aussie track, I think this guy would knock it out of the park, man. I think he could do, vocally, he could do anything Ozzy uh, could do, or ever did. I mean, he's got that kind of uh, range and talent, and where was this guy my whole life, you know? I just feel like I've missed the boat, you know? Like Bill Burr, Bill Burr is just now getting into Slayer, and he said he feels like he's missed he missed the boat on Slayer, you know. And it's thirty years later, 
and he's just now getting into them. I feel the same way with this band and with this this dude in particular, this uh, Candlemass vocalist. I have to find out his name, but if you know his name, yeah, go ahead and put that in the comments section too. I feel like I missed the boat on this guy, and this record came out in 1987. Uh, that was 30 years ago, so I'm, I feel like a dumbass for not listening to this until now. This is... This is um, this is so good, man. I can't. I don't even know what to say. Uh, I'm gonna finish the rest of this track. Once again, the solo didn't need to be in there, and they could have shaved the last 45 seconds off, and it wouldn't have hurt the track. Dude, to me, that was one of the best vocal performances I've ever heard. That was spellbinding. I don't see how, you know, I always say this, I'm like, I don't see how someone could not like this, but in this case, literally, like, if you're a fan of of clean vocals and heavy metal dude listen listen to this track and number eight mourner's lament tell me that guy is not a good singer man he's a fantastic singer jeez yeah i was just blown away by that again i didn't really notice too much else going on in that song because i was so focused on his delivery and just his ability and the vibrato and how he kept changing pitch and that's like seeing somebody who's a um, incredible stand-up comedian get on stage and just riff on their favorite subjects, you know, or <clears throat> reading um, a short story by uh, a writer who's been at it for 30 years and they've perfected the, the art of the short story and you read the short story, maybe you've got like an anthology that you're reading out of, you read it and you're just like, dude, how, like, this is... This is like a jewel. This is a literal diamond right here. You're just seeing... What I'm trying to say is you're getting to see somebody, a specialist, somebody who's really good at a particular thing, perform that thing and perform it out of this world, like world class. That is That was world class right there. All right, that song. That was killer, man. <laughs> God... I'm so mad at myself for not having listened to this band. You know, I've well, I've heard certain songs, but I'm just mad at myself for not having listened to this album before now. God, what was I thinking? We're going to go move on to Bewitched again. I've already heard this song. Uh, I watched the video for it. I loved the video. The video is hilarious. Uh, very low budget, but hilarious. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and play the song now. Maybe I'll have a different interpretation of it. Um, if I just listen to the audio. <laughs> Oh 
my god! That's why you have to listen to the music without the mu music video, okay? Because when I've I've watched the music video before, and I had heard the song "Solitude" um, off of Epicus Dumicus Metallicus, which I liked, by the way. Um, but that was really my only exposure to Candlemass. And when I saw the video for this song, I thought, "Oh, that's kind of funny, you know? Whatever. These guys. This is a little bit campy." You know, this is old, this is, uh, you know, whatever. But listening to this song without the video, man, I get to, instead of being distracted by how ridiculous and funny and over the top the video is, I can really focus on the actual music and realize what a killer song this is. The chorus in this song is crazy cool. Again, his he's killing it with his vocals. If you guys are familiar with uh, some of the terminology in, in hip-hop, what the hip hop heads say whenever an artist really goes in on a track and just, you know, their rhyme scheme is crazy, they've got all these salient points they're making, and their flow and delivery is, is on point and crazy, and they just go through and they're real witty and slick with their writing. And when that happens on a track and it's like that the whole way through, hip hop heads say they murdered the track. That is like the phrase that they use. That's the terminology they use. To me, like vocally, this is the metal analog to that same experience that hip hop fans get with certain artists, you know, who just, they absolutely murder a track, right? This guy is murdering the, this track vocally. This and Mourner's Lament, both of these tracks. It's the most epic thing I've ever heard, man. I don't know what I'm gonna do after this, like, I'm so, so, so glad I reviewed this, or I chose to react to this, because this is, this has been missing in my life, man. Jesus. <sighs> anyway, man, I'm starting to get excited, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go ahead and play uh, the rest of this song. <laughs>
I like this dude better than Ozzy. I'm not saying it's an objective fact that he's better than Ozzy. I'm just saying I enjoy his voice more than Ozzy. Yeah, you can put that in your pipe and smoke it. That song is an instant classic, man. Just these three songs, At, at the Gallows End, Dark in the, Are the Veils of Death, and Bewitched, those three songs by themselves are enough that you should buy this album. I'm so impressed, man. I feel like this guy is one of the greatest metal vocalists I've ever heard. He's got such an operatic voice. And uh, I just looked up his name. It, it's His name is Messiah Markelin. And he was born in 1967. So he's my dad's age. That's crazy, man. God, where has this guy been my whole life, man? I just, yeah, I'm just trying to decompress because I'm, I'm like having a meltdown right now. Being, get, feeling, you know, blown away and, but also, and, and overwhelmed with the beauty and, and just upset and mad at myself for not listening to this album sooner. Dude, if I would have been an adult metalhead back in the late 80s, I would have been, it would have been this and uh, King Diamond. I don't know, King Diamond, when did uh, Abigail come out? Do you, you guys in the uh, comments section, I'll just look it up right now. King Diamond Abigail came out in 1987, the exact same year as this album by Candlemass, Nightfall. What an amazing time to be into operatic metal, <laughs> operatic metal vocalists. What a time, man. With these, these two guys, King Diamond and um, Messiah Markelin were both in their prime. What a time. What a time that was. That must have been. And the funny thing is, is on top of that, you had these early grindcore outfits and guys going on stage and being like, wah, wah, wah. So there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying, like, the difference is night and day between that and what these guys were up to, man. I think this guy is and King Diamond are, like, on an equal playing field, man. I think you're looking at chocolate and peanut butter when you look at these two, man. To me, it's like uh, 1A and 1B. I'm just trying to... I'll put it that way. 1A and 1B. I need to listen to more of Candlemass's discography and see if I can really make a better determination about where I would rank this guy and his voice. But based on what I've heard on this album, uh, this guy is next level. So this band is, is next level. But we're going to play the last song. This is number 10, Black Candles. It is probably going to be another instrumental. A nice way to close the album out, uh, continue that theme. It's uh, 2 minutes and 15 seconds. <laughs> Absolutely perfect way to, to finish out an album. Loved that instrumental, uh, loved the guitar melodies and, and the, the acoustic, and then it kind of bled into and transitioned into this more electric guitar, and it had um, a little bit of a, like I've said before in other videos, sort of a weepy, kind of melancholic, dark riff. That was just beautiful, man. It was so such a fitting way to end this album. This album had so many good songs on it. I liked everything after um, Codex Gigas, basically. Tracks 4 through 10, those seven songs, 
and I'll go through the list with you real quick. Um, At the Gallows End, Samarithan, uh, Marchef Unibre, Dark Are the Veils of Death, Mourner's Lament, Bewitched, and Black Candles. I liked all of those. Um, I thought all of those were amazing in their own way. Even though there were some issues I felt on Samarithan and on uh, maybe Mourner's Lament, maybe the instrumentation could have been a little bit more interesting. That didn't really ruin those songs for me. I still thought they were good songs. Um, all of those I thought were excellent. Well of Souls I'll have to listen to again. Codex Gigas was, was good, but it was a little awkward. And then Gothic Stone was just like the uh, the prelude to the album. So, oh, all in all, man, this is a badass album, okay? This is a classic right here. I can see and I understand why so many people are, are calling this a classic. Um, music critics, including fans, everybody is saying this is a classic. After hearing it, yeah, I can understand why people say that. And uh, I can definitely see legions of bands from around the world hearing this and copying these guys. Um, you may say that this is derivative of Black Sabbath and Metallica, but to me, um, I would take this album over most of what Black Sabbath uh, wrote. And... That's probably me being biased because I didn't live during that time whenever Black Sabbath was in their prime, but I wasn't around whenever Candlemas was at their prime either. I didn't. I was born in 1990. I was born three years after this album came out. I just, I think this, this is beautiful. It's uh, mystical. It's dark. It's at times heavenly uh, and inspiring. Like I said, it sounds like ancient music that's been pulled from the hallowed halls of heavy metal lore and like heavy metal history. It's just got a very ancient but also majestic quality about it. I would never be, I could never get tired of listening to this. It just, like I said before, just those three songs, At the Gallows End, Dark Are the Veils of Death, and, and Bewitched are worth the price of this album. Yeah, I may have to purchase this at some point. I don't know when, because I'm, I'm broke and I have no money. Yeah, this is, you can add another one to the list, man. I'm very excited about this album. I'm definitely going to be checking out more Doom on this channel. Probably not for a while, though, because though, there's other stuff that I want to get to. But uh, yeah, I was super satisfied with this, man. I, I can't believe I haven't listened to this album until now. I'm almost 30 years old. Met lifelong metalhead. Never, never heard this album. Don't judge me, <laughs> is what I'm saying. I'm sorry, okay? I'm so sorry. I'm sorry for this band. I'm sorry for, you know, shaming and defacing the uh, metalheads. And I'm sorry, most of all, I'm sorry for myself because... I was, you know, ignorant and denying myself this fantastic music for so long. That's it, guys. Fantastic album. I might be doing some more Candlemas on this channel. I'll have to think about it, but I was, I was that impressed with this. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you dug the video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe below. And uh, thank you for visiting the channel. I hope you have a great morning, great afternoon, great evening, and good night. I'll see you guys next time. All right, bye.